In the last video, we had seen how to build the first Android app and run it on your mobile phone. We will continue to learn more new topics, but before we do that, let us take a step back and take a look at the project that we just built and what is the structure of the files inside it and what do they mean. As for the best way to do that, you can go here and instead of the Android view, select the project view. Once you're in the project view, you can see the list of all the files. Some of them you don't really ever need to edit and they are automatically generated during the build process. So you don't really need to go into the details of every little nitty gritty here. But there are a lot of files related to Gradle, which is the build tool that we are using. So Gradle is a wrapper that decides basically your Android app is built out of Java files or these days we can use Kotlin files and they are compiled using the Java compiler which is Java C or the Kotlin compiler which is Kotlin C. Build.gradle basically decides which files are going to be built, which models are going to be built, what libraries are included in your project and where those libraries are going to be fetched from. There is a build.gradle file at the very outset of your project which tells which repositories we are going to be using to download our libraries, what are the dependencies of this project, our project depends on Gradle itself and what are the repositories that are going to be used inside all the sub projects. The most important folder is the app folder and inside the app folder there is a build folder inside which all built data is stored it's all machine related machine generated data here so you never need to go into the build folder and make any changes but your output is also stored here which is which means that when you are developing your app the apk actually gets stored inside the build folder so if you actually want to pick out the apk and install it on some computer manually without running android studio you can take the apk out of this folder there's a libs folder if you are adding libraries to your android app which you can add here then this module itself has a build.tradle as well and this defines properties about the Android app that it is going to be built. The first line is apply plugin and com Android application which means that this module is an Android application. Other kind of plugins that are available include Android library. So this line decides whether this module is an Android application or an Android library. Then we have a compile SDK version which tells which SDK version we are using to compile this project. 26 stands for Android Oreo. So we are building this using the Android Oreo SDK. Then there is an application ID. The application ID is basically the package name and it must be unique for your app. You cannot install two apps with the same application ID on a phone. Min SDK version tells that any phone which has SDK version less than 20 will not allow this app to be installed. The target SDK version is 26 which means this is the Android version on which we have tested this app and this is the Android version for which we are building. Keep in mind that if target SDK version is 26, it does not mean that your app will be disallowed from running on SDK versions 27, 28 and above. Okay, It only means that you have tested it on 26 and not on 27. There is an optional item which we can add is called max SDK version. And if you set a max SDK version to say 27, it means your app would not be allowed to be run on an Android version above 27. The version code is an integer number for your app. And if you want to update your app, your version code must be greater than the version code of the app that you have updated. Version name is a string that is shown to the user. Version name does not follow any logic and your version name need not be incremental in nature. Your version name should be informative of the user. So for example, if you're creating an alpha of a particular version, you can name it as alpha like this. Okay, so this way users would know that this is an alpha level version. This build.gradle file also contains dependencies, libraries that are used inside our project. All the dependencies inside implementation are used to build the app. All the dependencies under test implementation and Android implementation are used for unit testing and software testing purposes. Our source code resides inside the SRC folder. Inside the SRC folder, you will see that there are three models, Android test, main and test. 
whatever goes into your APK is inside the main folder. The Android test and the test folder are tools which are required for testing our app. Software testing inside Android is a topic that we will cover later on in this course. Inside main, we see that there is a Java folder and there is a resource folder. The Java folder contains main activities Java source code. Anything that is Java source code must be inside the Java folder because the Java compiler runs on files only inside the Java folder and not on any file that is outside the Java folder. Anything inside your app that is not Java code is going to be a resource. For example, if you have a background of your app, something like this, that is a resource. If you have a drawable, which is basically this, uh, this photo of this uh, Android looking face, or if you have a icon to be used inside our launcher, for example, like this, or we have some values like some strings defined inside our app, or we have some colors defined for our app, all of these items go into resources. And similarly, our layout XML file, which defines the UI of our activity also goes into resources. Keep in mind that there could be Android apps that do not have any resources and are purely written in Java. Also keep in mind that there could be Android apps that do not have any Java code at all, like libraries or icon packs. But every Android app must have an Android manifest.xml. The Android manifest.xml makes your APK valid. If your APK does not contain an Android manifest.xml, that's not a valid app. Android manifest.xml contains the package name of the app and it contains a tag for the entire application. The application tag has properties like whether this app can be backed up or not, whether it supports right to left languages, what is the theme of the app, what is the name of the app as shown to the user and so on. Inside the application, every activity that your app contains must have its own tag. The name of the activity is basically the name of the class and an activity needs to have an intent filter. What are the intent filters? We are going to discuss further in the topic called intents. So this gives you a basic idea of the project structure of your Android app. Thank you.